If you enjoy my videos, then please like, subscribe, and share. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Inglebard. Wait a minute, what am I doing covering new games like Streets of Rage 4 and Bloodstained Ritual of the Night? Truth is, I decided to switch things up a little bit. Flip the script. Blank the blank. Now, don't worry, I'm still going to be a mainly retro gaming focused channel, but I am going to cover some new or current games from time to time as long as they're what I consider to be retro adjacent. Things that are, at the very least, reminiscent of the classics we know and love. Today I'll be giving you a very brief review of the original release of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, and an in-depth look at its recently released update that includes some brand new game modes. So first, what the heck is a Bloodstained Ritual of the Night? A miserable little pile of secrets! Well, that and a spiritual successor to the exploration-based Castlevania games that have appeared on the PlayStation, Game Boy Advance, and Nintendo DS. It also launched on Kickstarter way back in 2015, and at the time, very briefly, was the most successful video game project that had ever appeared on the platform. It was so successful they decided to add some stretch goals, things like releasing it on unplanned systems, such as the Wii U and the PlayStation Vita. I think I'll get the Wii U version. Damn it! I think I'll get the Vita version instead. Damn it! No, I didn't actually back the game on Kickstarter, but I did always plan to get it, and I did buy the PC version of the game shortly after it was released in June of 2019 and discounted slightly. What are my thoughts on Bloodstained Ritual of the Night? It's great! Oh, you want more than that? Okay! Bloodstained Ritual of the Night was released for the PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch in June of 2019, over four years after the Kickstarter opened. When it came out, it was plagued with game-breaking bugs and problematic updates that caused some players to have to start the entire game over. Not the smoothest launch ever. But shortly after that, the higher-end console and PC versions were pretty much fixed up and you could finally play the game as intended even though it was lacking a lot of the promised features from the Kickstarter. And the game itself? Well, it's really great! While most reviewers compare this to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, it's really much more like two of the later games, Aria of Sorrow and Dawn of Sorrow for the GBA and DS respectively. This game's shard system mimics the soul system from those games, allowing you to collect passive and active abilities from almost every enemy you encounter. A lot of the basic enemies are clearly stand-ins for Castlevania enemies in both appearance and behavior. The game is pretty long, looks pretty good, has a fantastic soundtrack, mostly by the fantastic Michiru Yamane, and a detailed crafting system. If you like any of the Metroid-style Castlevania games, you should absolutely love Bloodstained. So really, that's my review of the standard game. It's old and it's been out for a while, so I don't really see the need to go into too much more detail. Yeah, 8 out of 10. Why not higher? It could definitely still stand to look a bit better. Some of the voice acting is kind of bad. It was missing basic extras you'd expect from a game like this. And while the latest update I'm going to talk about shortly addresses some of that, we're still also missing a huge portion of the promised extras even a year after the game came out, and over five years since the Kickstarter launched. Obviously, they overpromised a bit on Kickstarter, so yeah, if you were looking forward to local co-op, the roguelike mode, classic mode, online multiplayer, online challenge mode, the third playable character, and a few other things, well, you won't be able to help but feel like you didn't get what you expected. Which brings us to today. The long-promised second playable character has finally been released. You can now play the game as Zangetsu. The roguelike dungeon mode that had been planned has gone the way of the Wii U and PS Vita versions of the game, instead replaced by a highly customizable randomized mode. What's the verdict on these additions? We'll get to that shortly, but there is something else we have to talk about first. If you like bugs in your games, then boy are you in for a treat, my friends! Because you see, the new modes are supposed to be available to anyone who has already completed the game and gotten the good ending. Now the problem that I had, and that everybody else I've spoken to that has the game has had, is that when they installed the update, the new modes were not available. In fact, 
they didn't show up until they went and defeated the final boss again from a prior game save. So that's a big problem because if you don't have your final save anymore, if it got overwritten or you uninstalled the game and reinstalled it or whatever, guess what? The new modes aren't available until you beat the game again. And that ain't great. In fact, it's Let's look at Zangetsu first. You'll get a simplified, more action-y experience when you play as him. He doesn't have chests to open, items to collect, equipment to use, crafting to do, or any of that stuff. What's the f point? So what does he have then? Well, he's got immediate access to a host of his moves from the main game, his own version of the super jump, he gains experience and levels, and can still find and pick up life up and magic up items. Whew. What's really the most fun about playing as Zangetsu is that you can tackle the castle basically any way you want, since you can reach almost any area right from the start with his abilities. A couple of tiny sections of the castle have also been very slightly modified for play as Zangetsu. Another thing I'll let you know is that when you play as Zangetsu, you also basically get rid of all of the game's story except for a tiny smidgen at the end. So if you were hoping to get a bit of that Zangetsu lore from this mode, well, you don't get that. Sorry. I enjoyed this mode quite a bit. It's a much quicker playthrough, and come on, who doesn't just love slicing up demons with a katana? But I do have one question. Why the f*** did it take a year to get this out? Oh, Iga. So yeah, Zangetsu mode gets my seal of approval. If you're familiar with playing as, say, Richter in Symphony of the Night, or Julius in Arya or Dawn of Sorrow, it's basically the new version of that. It's another way to experience the game with a character that feels very different from Miriam, and is also a fun mode to play through, especially if you don't want to deal with any of that story or questing stuff. There's also a new boss at the very end if you do everything right. The other major change with the new update is, of course, the randomizer mode. See all this stuff? Yeah, all that. That's what you can change. For my playthrough, I changed everything that I could to make this as random as possible. It was a little scary at first, especially since I didn't even start with a weapon, but I got some pretty powerful stuff really early in the game. This mode also acts as a speedrun. It provides you with a seed that you can save and share with your friends, and also gives you a timer that stays up and running constantly. Want to compete with your friends or random strangers on the internet? Just blast your seed over to them. Wait, what? Is this new random mode a real replacement for a roguelike mode? Nah. The castle is always the same, the only thing you can randomize structure-wise is whether the save slash teleport rooms stay as they were in the main game or are randomly assigned. And a word to the wise, you might want to keep those as is. Otherwise, you risk losing a teleport room in a large area and might have to do a lot of running around and backtracking. The randomizer can create some pretty interesting results. So it does eliminate a bunch but not all of the story scenes. You can keep and randomize almost all the quests, and frankly, in my run through, there was one quest I only managed to finish the very first layer of, because I just couldn't get or craft what the quest giver wanted. But you know what? That comes with the territory. I made it through this particular seed in less than 10 hours, so it wasn't exactly much of a hindrance not being able to complete the quests. One thing that did suck is that I didn't get the silver bromide you need to make the ID you need to get onto the train until near the very end of the game. That's what a randomizer is all about, isn't it? I have no complaints about my randomized playthrough. Getting a few powerful items and shards very early on put a smile on my face. While it was more than a little frustrating not being able to pick up some things that you ordinarily get early. If you love playing as Miriam and know the game by heart, the randomizer is a great way to mix it up and have a somewhat different experience. It'll never be the roguelike procedurally generated mode that was promised, but it definitely adds to the game and I liked it. Well there you have it. We've finally gotten a couple of cool updates to the game that really should have been available right from the start. Now they do add value and it was a lot of fun to experience the game in a few new ways, and I really enjoyed my time playing both as Zangetsu and through the randomizer. Now I still can't give the game a higher review score than my original 8 out of 10. You see, it's still got a lot of problems, still has sort of a low budget look and feel, especially with the main characters and their animations. 
and we're still missing an awful lot of things that have been promised in the original Kickstarter even now, five years after that Kickstarter launched. And aside from that, there's still a lot of bugs in this game. I even ran into one while I was recording footage for this review and in-depth look at the update. What happened? Well, I quit the game and went to the main title screen. When I did that, some of my choices from the start screen were missing! Like extras, which is a bit of a problem, because all the extra modes, things like the boss rush, the speed run, the new Zangetsu mode, and the randomizer mode, are only accessible from the extras menu. So what happens if you just go to start now is you can see your saves, but they're grayed out and you can't select them for those modes. Now I know they'll probably come back if I go and beat the last boss again, but why should I have to do that? I really feel at this point that the team should stop trying to add new things to the game and just concentrate on fixing the bugs and the things that are broken. It's time to move on. And that'll just about do it for this video, my current and retro gaming friends. Go ahead and jump into the comments and let me know what you think about Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Does the update add any appeal for you if you didn't already own the game? With that, I will say thanks for watching, and see me later!